stories shape our world. They're like verbal DNA. They tell us who we are, what's important, and how we should behave. Stories create our future. Stories matter. And that's why the story I want to tell you today matters so much for the future of this planet. Not long ago, we awoke as a world to scenes like this one, and this one, and then a couple moments later, this one. Millions are in uproar in Cairo. Rumor is they heard our new spring collection is now available online. <laughs> Kenneth Cole. OK, we all witnessed this revolution. We saw millions of people pouring into the streets to claim a new democracy. Many of them died. And then this came across our Twitter feeds. How would that make you feel? Demoralized, saddened, shocked? Well, actually, this kind of thing has become completely typical. What Cole was doing with this callous little advertisement disguised as a joke was using a storytelling language that has come to totally dominate our media landscape. Storytelling with a simple moral of the story. There's nothing in life more important than shopping. It's called inadequacy marketing, and it was born about 70 years ago when marketers learned that they could start telling stories rather than just hawking their features or, or product uh, specifications to get people to buy. And these stories, like all stories, work with a simple formula. It casts us, the consumer, as the helpless damsel in distress, with the brand as the hero coming to save the day to protect us from a world of anxiety and fear. Simple stories. In the old days, they were bald-faced, and direct. <laughs> and this is a really sad story. This woman is 30 years old. This spinster will never be married. It's almost too late because she has halitosis. There is a hero come to save the day. It's Listerine. And with this ad, a nation fell into fear, and a new beauty category was born that would last for generations. Now, marketers can't do the same thing anymore. They can't attack us quite as directly, but they do something similar. This is Whopper Freakout in which adults walk into a Burger King and are told, as a joke, that the Whopper is no longer available. They melt down into states of infantile rage and fear. <laughs> We're all supposed to laugh, but the moral is dead serious, and it's the same as it's always been. We are nothing without our favorite brands. There is nothing more important in life than consumption. The, the, the moral of the story that we receive 3,500 times a day now is that to be a good citizen, is to be a good consumer. And remember, stories are cultural DNA. They shape our world. So while Kenneth Cole's tweet may have been ridiculous, it was nothing new. But this is thousands of citizens taking to Twitter, drawing a line in the sand, pushing back, using humor themselves to go viral. And the marketer begins to retreat. He apologizes. He promises he'll never do it again. What are we witnessing here? I believe that inadequacy marketing can only work when audiences are passive consumers of content. Once we can find each other, speak back, and say, something's very wrong here, it starts to lose its power. And inadequacy marketing, which has fundamentally shaped our culture for a couple generations, transforming us from a nation of thrifty savers into rabid consumers and bringing with it all the ecological, spiritual, and social crisis that it does, is set to expire with the end of the broadcast era. That is hugely significant, but I want to explain exactly why and how. And to do that, we need to go back at least 70,000 years. So let's go. <laughs> Human beings were born and evolved in oral tradition societies. Here, a speaker shares an idea, and the audience listens. If the audience is so compelled, they become the speaker themselves. And here's how the oral tradition works. It's survival of the fittest. If ideas are not compelling, they simply die. Transmissions move through social networks and webs. It's not one to many, it's many to many. And it changes along the way because everyone owns an idea while it's in their possession. Stories dominate this kind of oral tradition. And all societies before writing left us only two things, their trash and their stories. So we know stories are incredibly important in the oral tradition. The most important of these stories are called myths. And they provide the glue that holds society together. Wherever you find a group of people living together, you will find myths to hold them, to give them values, and to give them a sense of self. And they combine four key elements. Explanation. Here's a story about how the world works. Meaning, here's your place within that explanation and within that, within that universe that we're now ordering. Story. 
it's not just a recounting of what happened to my friend yesterday or what's going to happen tomorrow. It takes place long ago and far away. It's a symbolic language. And then ritual. Here's a very specific way, if you believe this story, to live it out in your own life. Now, Joseph Campbell, who we spoke about earlier, discovered that myths across all times and cultures followed a simple formula. He wanted to know, was there something that would predict that an idea would survive in this survival of the fittest landscape? Was there a formula? And he found, of course, that there was one. It's called the hero's journey. So many of us know it. We find a helpless outsider muddling through a broken world. She wants to live, our, live out her values, but she feels kind of helpless to do so because the world is broken. Then she meets a mentor. The mentor tells her so much more is possible. He reconnects her to her values and sends her on a dangerous quest of self-discovery. Here she confronts the evil source of the world's brokenness, and she grabs a treasure. But this treasure doesn't make her rich and famous. This treasure is something that she humbly returns to the broken world to provide an elixir and heal the world, make the world a better place. In other words, the stories that survived in oral tradition societies were about something very direct and simple with a clear moral. The helpless outsider helps build a better world. And we listen to these stories, we gobble them up, we love them because we identified with that hero. They were almost like a rite of passion, passage, an initiation to make us believe that we could grow up, contribute something more to society, be part of the community. In fact, it's the exact, exact opposite of what we see happening to those poor people in Burger King, melting down into infantile rage. It's about the adolescent growing up and giving something back. Those are the stories that have always survived. Now, we still flock to hear these hero's journey stories wherever we can, but we don't take them as seriously. They're not quite the myths that they once were. Why? Well, we don't, we don't live in the oral tradition anymore. The broadcast era came along and replaced that oral tradition. So now we don't take in uh, stories around the campfire. We fit, sit in front of our TV. We get magazines. We get newspapers, billboards, radio. It's no longer survival of the fittest. Now it's survival of the richest. Transmission is one to many. I just blast it out, and you're sitting on your couch eating your Cheetos and drinking your soda, and you have to wait for your show to start again. You're going to take that idea in. It doesn't matter how good or how well transmitted it is. Ideas are proprietary. You can't make it your own, and if you do, I might sue you and I don't need your participation to spread them. Now, in that world, these myths started crumbling, and sociologists started to believe that maybe for the first time ever, we were entering a myth gap. We were becoming a society that no longer had shared myths. They had never seen this before. Religion in the modern world still provides explanation, meaning, and ritual for so many, but it asks to be taken literally. And in our modern world and hyper-rational world, that's too much to ask for many so they no longer have universal mythic re resonance. Science provides us with plenty of explanation about how the universe works, but it's not a story and it doesn't provide ritual or meaning. And entertainment, great with story, doesn't want to do much more. So are we living in a world of myth gap? Do we no longer have myths? Are we the first culture to lose them and have none? I don't think so. We get 3,500 me commercial messages every day, and they're story-based. They use the inadequacy approach for the most part, and they've got the myth formula down cold. Take the Marlboro Man. He was born at a time when filtered cigarettes were only for women. But here's a new explanation, a filtered cigarette for men, a new way the world works. Not just smoking this with a filter won't just change your life, it'll actually give you a new identity. A rugged frontiersman smokes these cigarettes. If you do, you will be one as well. Story. Not a single person believed the Marlboro Man was real, but he still became the most iconic pitchman of all time. And ritual? It's pretty easy to walk down to the corner store and buy a different pack of smokes than you smoked before. Marketers transformed our society by becoming our myth makers. And they transformed our world once, and it only took two generations to do it. But we know that broadcast era is coming to an end. And a new era is beginning. We don't trust those advertisements we once did. We, don't have, we can skip over them. We can choose what content we take in and what we choose to pass along. So what's happening? I think what we're seeing with all this new social media and communication tools is that we're returning to an oral tradition. But in old oral traditions, it would take millennia for an idea to spread. Now, it can happen overnight. It's a digitally empowered oral tradition, and it looks just like the past. It's survival of the fittest again. Transmission moves through social networks and webs. Everyone owns ideas, and ideas that don't work simply die. And who will be the new marketers, the new myth makers of this oral tradition? We all will. You see, now we all have the tools to go viral. We all have the tools to share our stories. And as we do, we have a choice. We can rely on that old inadequacy approach of the past, 
which so many of us fall back on because that's what we've always known and always seen. And I've seen marketers and social, social messengers with the best intentions still trying to scare their audiences, make them feel guilty or insufficient if they don't take action. But we can do something better. We can learn from the great myths of the past. We can tell stories that cast our audiences in the role of hero as great myths always have. We can be the mentor, asking them to connect more deeply to their own values and go on a journey to actually contribute something to the world. We can reinforce that idea that everyone is a potential hero. Does this sound crazy? Well, a lot of the best brands have been quietly doing this all along. Nike, for instance, where other brands always assumed you should make your product convenient and easy and we'll do it for you. Nike comes along and says, no, actually, achievement's very difficult. Everything you need is already inside. We'd like to be with you on your journey. And they created a sensation. But I'm not just talking about selling shoes here, of course. I'm talking about something so much more. What I want to do is invite you on a kind of hero's journey, a journey to join millions of other people to hasten the end of a marketing and a myth-making language that no longer works. How do we do that? Well, first, you can do what thousands are already doing and did to Kenneth Cole. You can tell our mythmakers and our storytellers that inadequacy stories just won't cut it anymore. We can open our social networks only to the kind of stories that tell the truth about humanity, the truth that we are heroes in the making. Imagine a world in which the messages you received every day told you how much potential and sufficiency you had, instead of telling you how incomplete and pathetic you are. Imagine raising a child in such a world. It would be a very different world indeed because our stories shape our future, our stories are our cultural DNA. But even more importantly, you can recognize that the tools now at our disposal would have been unimaginable a generation ago. We all can become myth makers again and take that power back from the cynical marketers who have created our world of consumption. We can create an entirely new world if we find the courage and the inspiration to share our own great stories. I hope you'll do that because nothing is more important in this world right now. Thank you so much. Thank you.